all right everyone welcome back to central coast disc golf you have arrived at the conclusion of the 2023 disc mania open the disc golf pro tour silver series event from the beautiful prince edward island canada we've got a battle between eagle mcmahon and the world champion isaac robinson don't forget to scan the QR code for a seven day free trial to the Disc Golf Network. You scan today, you're gonna get pretty much all of Maple Hill, I believe. Of course, I'm Nate Perkins here with Connor O'Reilly once again. Connor, Rose Valley, what are your thoughts on the track after competing on it all weekend? I see a lot of potential in this property. I think there's some solid holes out there already. I think there's some that definitely need a little bit of tweaking, but course designer, tournament director, Ben Smith has been really receiving and welcoming to the feedback. And it's been awesome kind of working with him on some of the thoughts that us as players feel like could make the course better. Cause you know, we'd love to be back and we're here at the conclusion of our time in canada hole 10 par 4 dog legs steeply to the right very narrow landing zone down this tunnel tee shot leading you to a guarded approach that suits the forehand or the backhand straight shot pretty well forehand gap might be slightly bigger and we've seen just how difficult this first landing zone is to find i feel like it's maybe 15 feet front to back isaac m1 here looks short enough in front of the camera man usually the camera is just long of the window to where if you make them move you kind of are feeling oh, oh. And that just falling out of fish's hand Eagle slowing things down today. Going putter. Yeah, you seen him play a faster disc. Yesterday he just put a bit too much on it. That one's gonna come up a tiny bit short. Let's see if he's able to do anything more than just pitch around the corner. Ooh, and that little bit of root stoppage. Might have slowed Aiden down enough, but I don't know. It looks like he's up there equidistant with the camera guy. Fish coming way over the top. Looks like oh, he made Is this number three? It's kind of like a pretty quick hit out of the hand. Kind of things that nightmares are made of over there. Oh. FT2 forehand for Eagle. Yeah, he tries to get progress through the corner and is punished because of it. Oh, Aiden. Wow. He didn't like it, but it worked out. Yeah, fought through that initial catch on the tree and I think so put. Oh, nearly perfect position. Seemed like he had enough room, but I couldn't tell how much that first tree was in his way yeah some frustration out of our card on this hole and we see that forehand counter get to one on the round for isaac this has been the tournament with the most forehands isaac has thrown in his career almost at this point i bet fish finally joins us back in the open After a long, dark journey. Good touch there for Eagle. Puts it inside the bullseye. And that was for Bogey. Yeah, Fish started the round with eight pars, scored birdie on hole nine. But this is going to set him back a bit. Doesn't have the birdies to sacrifice. Yeah. 
Solid birdie for Aiden Scott. Three under on the day. Double for Fish. Let's see if he can take this opportunity to bounce back on the next two shorter holes. All right, just 205 feet. Shortest hole on the course. Playing is the easiest hole on the course as well. We've seen some baby flex forehands. That backhand seems a little tight with that down branch. You have to swing just underneath it, and then there's some late trees you want to miss if you're really going to get up into the bullseye. We saw Alden Harris score ace here yesterday, throwing his PA3. Aiden playing the same, a bit flat out of the hand. Yeah, that tree kind of keeps him out at that 25 to 30 range. Isaac and Glance chains around one. He's had this one very dialed in, as he should. Sixty-one per sixty-two percent birdie here today. Oh, and Eagle kind of tugs on that tactic a little bit, and that kicks him out of the circle. Fish going to the zone. Maybe that one is a regular zone. The way that flew right there. He's so good with getting that nose up. Sometimes hard to tell an eagle. Crashing out of the trees. Yeah, just proving how kind of raw parts of this course are. I think Fish expressed something about the drone bugging him on the T of 10, maybe still kind of putting with his ears, not his eyes. And it's not something you can get away with playing against the best of the best. Yeah, yeah what a stroke. Yeah, clean looking putt right there. Aiden, got a look of focus going today. Playing pretty solid. Trying to get it going. Isaac going to pick up another stroke on Eagle. The lead is now down to one. We're heading into another tight par three here in hole number 12. Connor, just how wide is this one? I want to say if you're just looking straight from tee to basket, my estimate, if you just throw like a nice thick laser through this thing it's going to be about 4.8 feet <laughs> wide <laughs> this tree we're flying just to the right of here if you can split it either way left or right usually you see success you'll check up somewhere into this hillside playing about 250 to 60 feet of power here Yeah, really back-to-back -back curve balls for players that are kind of geared toward ripping out in golf course style disc golf courses these days. Isaac flies a bit left of where he intended, but like I said, if you beat that tree either side, you usually find yourself pretty close. All three days, Isaac found his way into the circle. Eagle getting the stand up on that, I believe, FD2 you were saying. 
Yeah, I believe that's what that orange one is. And he's out in circle two. Isaac, a chance to tie it if Eagle can't connect. Oh, fish little, early. A little soft from fish. He's looking a bit out of sorts and frustrated. This looks like jail. Oh. Threw it well. Kind of a backbreaker tree, but he's still pretty close. Hopefully he can stay focused there. <laughs> pretty flight there. Forced to yeah. draw that one in on left to right because of that tree blocking his normal trajectory. That putt keeps Eagle ahead by one as Isaac is looking to tap his in for birdie. And what a save by Fish. Looked pretty gnarly over there. And two bullseyes here on 12. One on Friday, one today from Isaac. Bullseye there for Scott. Taking a peek at these scores. Lead is just one. Yeah, Isaac and Jake Wolf pushing that pace with the six down through 12. short par four but a tough one asking you to throw 315 feet dead straight and then stop it on dime dog leg to the left then you're flying another 200 feet up this hill with a lot of trees in the way these these two trees right here are difficult but then it's this next grouping up here two small gaps one six foot gap on the left one ten foot on the right it's it's been a tough one to birdie it's given our players a lot of trouble aiden playing mid-range looking to just push it to that back wall and died barely short and that's the tree if you're just a touch late in your timing it is right there waiting on you Big shocker, we've seen Eagle play this one more aggressive than the rest of the field, playing fairway driver, trying to cut the corner with the skip. This is one of those lines that Isaacs made a killing off, plays that beat up A2 for the distance control. Yeah, we've seen a lot of that A2 this week. We saw Eagle go fairway yesterday. He's actually slowing it up here. Yeah. I think that's tactic. Or maybe he just played that one a bit lower. I think yesterday he, he threw that blue FT3. Oh, no. Big misfire out of fish. Par is going to take quite the heroics from here. He's also having to elect for forehand roller, not a roller friendly course. <laughs> it's hard to roll it all out here. <laughs> so many undulations in these fairways, especially with all the downed trees Fish. from that hurricane. Still short of that corner. It looks like he just isn't able to bend it 
fast enough. Pushes to the back wall. That's what I wanted to do. Ah. Yeah, this is a hole that can sometimes make you just accept that you threw a good shot, but it just didn't work out. Isaac catches the last grouping right there. Keeps him outside in circle two. Eagle pinched right. Plays a lot of hyzer on the forehand. He's got a 55 footer up the hill for his birdie. Well thrown there for fish. There's that jump putt again. We've seen him implement that. So I actually asked Eagle about it after we saw him throw that putt on 14 yesterday. And he yeah. said he'd just kind of been working on it recently and it's been feeling good. So he's just kind of starting to implement it again. He said he used to do it a while back. Yeah, he definitely used to jump putt. And then all of a sudden it just it, it disappeared. I feel, I feel like 2019, Whatever. he just stopped and just... And started Start putting 120 from 100, feet. Yeah, <laughs> from 100 <laughs> feet, stand still, no problem. Yeah, I think he said he just, yeah, he kind of had a good session and he felt like he could just put it in so easy that he started going back to that jumper. And it is one of those things, when you when you make one, as soon as you make that one, it just feels like every one of them, you can, it's just that much easier and you can just... Really, you just shove it into the basket. Aiden's birdie streak on the back comes to a close there with a bogey. And we are on the tee of 14, the lightning bolt hole. Dead straight for about 325 to maybe 40 feet either die right there or if you have the forehand power to try to fade it late around this corner you can maybe get to this next corner if you throw one of the best shots this hole's ever seen if not you're probably throwing some kind of short scramble to try to position yourself facing down this final leg of the fairway dead straight some low ceiling created by that branch the drone flew under there and then a thick fir tree just to keep you honest at circle's edge Tough par four. Definitely will be called a par five in the future. Oh, that's low. Overturned. We've seen Eagle play a couple different ways here. Looks like he's going back to that aggressive over the top shot that we saw day one. Now that the wind is low again. Relying on the, look at that run up. We don't often see Eagle get that much speed out of the run up in the disc with the latest flip you ever saw. Just like and on really hole flew six. backwards, like 60 feet. Yeah, just like on six, he's just catching that corner just a little bit. It's just a little bit too sharp really shape the disc around it realistically and the Eagle's just not willing to throw the shot that it's asking for he wants to try to break the hole fish gonna be playing hyzer on a comet looking for late flip and this one's skied yeah he just didn't really get that one up to speed hyzered off on him yeah, I think if he kept it lower, it could have maybe worked out, but not with that much height. And Isaac looks like he kind of penetrates into the corner a bit. Likely five from there, unless he throws an incredible third.
this whole journey. <laughs> yeah. I Without think. like perspective, it's hard to tell where they're even at on the whole, <laughs> like which part of the lightning bolt. Dog like one, <laughs> yeah, dog like really two. Like, okay, eagles, eagles at the back wall here. Going spike splice over the towering trees directly in front of him. And you know, it's one of those sayings of disc golf. It's like, oh, you know, you can never play it the same, but this hole really feels like more than any other one. You're, you're just always going to go a little bit different, and you're always kind of buckled up for a wild ride. Aiden doesn't seem too happy with the result. Hard to tell where that one went. And Fish just has to kind of throw a touchy little overhand scuba. His round has been kind of falling off the rails a bit here. I know Fish was really oh. eyeing one of those podium finishes. That's the positioning he had, and even chasing down the win, being only three back to start the round. And where where is Fish at in the Pro Tour standings? I believe he's somewhere around the upper 60s mark. Okay. So not quite pushing for that Tour Championship spot. Yeah, just looking to solidify that MVP spot and the tour card for next season. Top top 72 play MVP next yep. week. Top 72 plus whatever backfill occurs. Aiden tickles the branch, not able to get the pace on it. Eagle shorter version of the same angle we saw him come at. Oh, does not connect. That's a bogey. Isaac, a chance to tie it up here. Yeah. Does Four holds a play. Now. You notice Hopefully we have all blue putters on the card. Battle. Do you see all blue putters? All blue putters mm. on this card. Matching the... Powder blue. Oh, that kind of that kind of tricked me out. I thought he was supposed to be playing from the further away lie. I was like, "Fish, that wasn't your lie." Just playing quick as Aiden was. Figuring something out before he taps in. Tough double bogey. Kind of erase the work he did on the back nine. Back to even after starting with three birdies. There on the back. All right, 15. Little reprieve from the journey that is 14. This is just a 320 foot hyzer. And we've seen Eagle go with that splice every day, and not quite get past this last tree right here. You either, you either honestly just need to get lucky through it, or you just need to go right below the branch in front of the late trees. As you said yesterday, Connor, really easy to go deep on this hole. Yeah, I think the pure the pure big part of the gap leads you long of the pin. Isaac has good height here. Oh. He drops off the limbs right at the base. They saw him do something similar yesterday, huh? Pressure's on. Eagle probably going to play this one even wider over that stand of trees on the right side. There we go. That's a clean release. Yeah. There it is. He's back. That is pure right there. He's been struggling on this back nine, but that'll be 15 left for birdie. Aiden Scott looking to bounce back after going three over on the last two. Oh, oh my oh. goodness, Aiden. Looks good for a second, Connor. Yeah, he's playing overstable mid-range there and paces it out perfectly. All right, 
right so far fish has had one birdie per nine hopefully he can pick up two more out of these next three as we know 16 is kind of an impossible get We got a flash back to hole 14 and shout out Jared Stoll scoring the only three of the weekend. Only three of the weekend. That's huge. I'm guessing that big overhand of his came in handy on that one. I wonder if that's the second shot, just cutting that corner. Yeah, Man. he must. All right, after 15 holes, we are tied for the, I think the first time this weekend, Eagle is not leading this event. Yeah, 16, par 4, averaging well over, though. This one hasn't yet seen a birdie on the weekend. If you can get your second shot somewhere up around here, you'll have a short approach left. You just got to gauge the wind and try to put it close on this exposed green. Hazard surrounds this hole left, right, and long. And the first shot kind of creates a low ceiling, so you got to focus up and beam it into the hill. And the left side of the road there is actually playing as a hazard. You have to get this one up and across the road to start. Yeah. Isaac, it's sneaking through those branches. It's kind of the scary thing about trying to play the flex here, that higher release. Really test the canopy off the tee. Hey, yo. It's a nice branch. Eagle playing super yo, yo. overstable on that splice. And just ducking low. Then cutting off his follow through, trying to focus on crouching. 50 feet in front of Isaac or so. Stabling out quick on fish and hard to tell. That Oof. is in the hazard. It stings. Yeah, he was really trying to visualize that one and just didn't quite get the turn he wanted. Aiden, on the other hand, more turn than he would like. And, and Scott needed some help right there. That's also finding the hazard. And not a great spot to just throw from. And now Fish is trying to throw a big turning shot back to the fairway. It does have enough. That is a gutsy shot. Isaac playing wide over the hazard ragweed. Once again, trusting it just like yesterday up to the flat. And the aesthetics of these fairways out here are pretty nice. Yeah, I think these open holes for the most part are looking really good out here at Rose Valley. Aiden fights through some limbs on the swing. Puts himself in par range. Just a casual 405 foot hyzer there up the hill. Yeah, Eagle's way up the hill. He's going to have somewhere in the ballpark of 200 feet, 250 at the most in. And this is one of those greens that even when the wind's down, it can feel windy up there on the hill. There goes Fish. That'll be a bogey save. Aiden doesn't get the width, but gets it there quick enough. He will have a 
25 footer. Isaac with that A2. Just up to flat for the briefest moment. Fades out. Just distance control is just automatic for the world champ. Our last chance at a birdie on the weekend in the air. And the hole didn't see one. Will be oh, relabeled to a didn't par see five. One? Yeah, th it was one of those two. They tried to get changed to a par five. Weren't able to get it done. <laughs> Either way, four is a great score. Five feels like you made at least one mistake. Good five save for Scott after the hazard drive and McMahon for the four. Robinson does the same. Yeah, we're gonna stay knotted up. Just two holes remaining. Bogey for fish. Him and Scott both save very nicely. 17, 393. It has the appearance of playing downhill. I feel like it, it actually plays slightly up. And yesterday, you know, felt like it was the longest 400 foot par three ever. Really d just difficult to even get it there. And the wind back down today, gonna be playing into the slightest head crosswind here. And players should be dropping their hyzers into that circle. Yeah, playing pretty true as the distance today, as long as you make sure to read your angles proper. Got it flat. Fish asking for it to go. Oh, that was so whoa. close. I mean, within a foot. That'd be quite the way to put the pressure on. Yeah, no kidding. And I believe he still has put the pressure on. Eagle playing wider and spikier as he is like to do. He gets the Close. dig down. Okay, advantage eagle. Isaac's closer to the circle's edge. Eagle's caddy almost looks like Isaac Robinson's dad a little bit to me, and it's kind of got me a couple times this weekend. Fish drops one into the circle. Let's see if Aiden can... Put one in the bullseye for us. Pick your spot out in the sky. Swing the disc. Does it have the speed? All right, some calm putts coming up. Fish just outside. Yeah. He has been low on several of those. Bam. In front of the crowd. Up on the hill. Aiden Scott. Yeah, it's been a wild ride on the back for Aiden. Oh. <laughs> Just this. No tension in the wrist is what is so impressive to me. I mean, a lot of people look like that when they're practicing the step up on a tournament especially at this stage it's hard to open up the wrist yeah Isaac rarely shows any kind of nerves out on the course always playing free damn an eagle is, dueling birdies yeah this is going to be a battle to remember Connor one hole left all tied up and I believe Isaac still has the box over Eagle. Yeah, Isaac will have the box. Par four, 835 feet plays downhill throughout the first shot, unless you really bomb it down into that trench where it starts to rise back. Hazard surrounds this hole. 
least for the first part. And then as we approach this fence line here, the hazard ends and we have a short out of bounds patch, out, out of bounds patch, inbounds, island green. If you do not land it on the green, but you fly across, you go to a drop zone. If you don't even cross at all, you play back from where you were last in the hazard. Wow, we hit that hard. A lot of trust out over the hazard, Connor. Yeah, the people like it. He gets to the down slope. That's a good sign. It means he will have 350 feet into the pin or so. Wow, still 350. It's big. Eagle. His new cloud breaker. And that duck is your so heads, punch people. Slow. These fans. No There's chance. There's a couple times I th they haven't learned their lesson with eagle shots coming out here. And what a huge mistake. He's been leading the entire tournament. Going to potentially give it up here on 18. Isaac just needs to get up and down for the win. Isaac has 350 feet to a wide open green to take this one down off the comeback. Aiden continues his up and down back nine with the hazard drive there. Hard to tell whether Fish got the stick or not. I think he might have climbed in there, Connor. Ben did tell me he purposely left the grass about three and a half inches here so the players didn't get as much ground play. Trying to award those shots that were inbounds and Aiden hangs that one out. It's gonna be penalized once again here. Likely double bogey or worse for him coming up. So fish is in the hazard there. Just narrowly. That's frustrating. And he's sending it just over the OB stakes. Tell he's kind of still watching that in disbelief, and it's been a frustrating day for him, I'm sure. But either way, solid showing on the weekend overall. Isaac, this one is sawed off. Is he gonna get down? Okay, well, gets forward enough. Okay. He's left himself what 38 up the hill, it's a little more uphill than it looked right there. Eagle forehand from 310 to here. Put the pressure on. Yeah, bullseye. That's okay. a guaranteed par for McMahon, pretty much. Uh, Isaac has the win in his hands. 38 footer for Isaac Robinson to come back and beat the man who kind of seemed almost untouchable for a few moments, I feel like, this weekend. Just with his ability to go over the top on some of these holes and make those open shots look so easy with the high spiking shots. Yes, there it is. That's the stroke he's been looking for all day. Strong pop out of the legs there. Great pace. Yeah, tough back. Four over on the back nine, but... Great tournament for fish overall. It's always a win when you can make it on to the live broadcast as well as the Central Coast Post. Isaac Robinson for the win. Oh my gosh, that was like centered up high but the hyzer and the maybe softer pace that just it never got into the chains yeah maybe the slightest bit left if you're gonna try and pick it apart but i felt like it could have maybe dropped and we are like to see extra holes of disc golf the canadian fans are getting their money's worth y'all wow Robinson McMahon playoff here in Canada. We are playing holes 1 and 18 on repeat. 
the wind is down, Connor, and the talk amongst the crowd was that this playoff could potentially go on for a really long time. I mean, with both of these players being dialed, and if the wind was up, I don't think this this playoff would have that potential. Ladies and gentlemen, but look how calm it is. Noise. First on the tee in our playoff hole, Mr. Isaac Robinson. Yeah, we could see some treacherous wind. To see those flags just sitting still for this playoff. Obviously, these two guys are at the top of the field, dialed in with their game. It's really going to be who makes a mistake first out here. Isaac pounds on that one. He's really stretching him out, turning my mood around. Yeah, one of the longer drives of the weekend here on one. Second on the tee, Mr. Eagle McMahon. Eagle also has had no trouble getting up to that flatter shelf. Let's see how greedy he wants to get here. Yeah, Isaac kind of flattens his out a little bit. And Eagle just kind of one angle hyzer. It, it does slide up a little in the flight, but he outdrives Isaac on the hyzer. Yeah, what speed out of McMahon. And Isaac back to that A2, hangs it wide. That is, you know, that's a, that's a well into circle one. But. 24 feet. Could be closer. A deep exhale there from Eags and going tactic. Okay, pressure's kind of on Isaac right now. Oh, this just feels, it feels so tense when it's life or death on the putt. Our first slight bit of seeming advantage to McMahon. No problem for Robinson. Same, just quick routine. Not really giving himself too much time to think about that. Already a very confident player. Had that confidence boosted with that world championship victory. Eagle, yeah, it's about time we ask these fans to take a, take a step aside. That is the last human being on earth you want the disc to come out of the hands and hit you by. Back to that black and gold. That's DD3 that he's been throwing all weekend. Yep, he's... Same disc that he just threw... OB in regulation and he sticks to his game plan hits it pretty hard Eagle said that he wants to throw far enough to be able to go forehand into this green and he is down on that down slope like we yeah. mentioned earlier in that 350 and in range which I know is where he feels comfortable with that spiking forehand Isaac going back to the mid again, looks like. Or is it that A2? Yeah, I think it is that A2, and he's just going to hit this really hard, gets it flat, and fading out early, but nope. That's yeah. 20 feet. I thought it might be a little short myself yeah. as well, but get some good speed on that one. Equal back to the splice over stable fairway. Looking to come out quite the hyzer angle and see if it check skips. Yeah, sits down nicely. Likely gonna find ourselves pushing even further as Isaac makes good. I mean, it's just so calm. They could just keep doing this.
It's like, who's going to get the first spit out? You know, like when you're playing your buddy who's worse than you at ping pong and you're like, okay, I'm just going to keep it in play until they mess up so I don't feel like a jerk, but I can still beat them. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if we're going to see that type of action happen here. You can hear the rumble of the crowd. Everyone excited to continue watching disc golf. Isaac hangs this one out a bit, but this definitely fading in time. I'm sure that was a bit scary yeah, for him. Close. And we don't have our catch cam up in position this time. Player is ready to go. Do you know if this is, is this PD2 from Eagle or an FD3? I feel I like it's a, I feel like it's a fairway that he's hidden. <laughs> and very well could be FD3, just knowing the speed he has and the way he gets the disc to do things. And he keeps making Isaac go first. All right, back to the A2 once again. Well versed for Isaac. This one looks a little bit better. Going to be closer into the basket. Yeah, puts it right there, bullseye's edge. Same disc for Eagle. Spiking Heiser. Oh, oh! We had... He tried to ice it right there. Talk about an I mean, exciting finish that would have been. We're both parked. Eagle for Eagle to take the W in the playoff. Collectively, six straight birdies in this playoff. We're headed back to hole 18, guys. It's just 1-18 and 18 on repeat. The fourth hole of a playoff. This is the longest playoff we have seen in quite a while. Eagle looks to have gotten this one correct as long as it doesn't take a huge flare skip. Need some help. Oh, oh wow. That uh, it seemed like it could have rolled a little bit and it just decided... Not yeah, to. It kind of took that first land. It kind of took some of the spin off. If it still had that spin, though, you would have seen that little curl up, and that would not have been good. Isaac gets flat on this one, just enough to hold the fade away. Should be center cut. Isaac first up once again. This time he hit the drive a little bigger. He's kind of on the down slope here. Yeah, throwing, running down and throwing forward can be tricky, but he made sure to get his left side of his body through. Still a lot left on that putt. Advantage Eagle here. Picking up that. Okay, a different disc here. I wonder what has Eagle switching it up on this one. Maybe just a little bit further back than this drive. Oh. Okay, he's putting a lot of pressure on Isaac. I think Isaac, yeah, circles edge right here. Maybe even just outside, hard to tell from this camera angle. <laughs> and he cleans it centered up. I have to reposition here, Connor. Get a little comfortable. <laughs> or they're going to have to move on to the hole 14 or At this point, it's going to be who, who starts getting hungry first, starts thinking about yeah. dinner. What's, who's going who's gonna to let the focus lapse? Isaac knows it's good. Doesn't have to watch it as much as the last one. Mahmoud puts himself well up on the hill, said, no one's passing me right now, y'all. Eagle wanted to though. He could. And how how difficult do you feel like these shots get the deeper you go into the playoff? Or are are these players even affected by it? I think there has to be some kind of tightening as this continues to go, knowing that okay, eventually someone has to make a mistake and you know, at this point you're kind of starting to think about like how how long is this gonna gonna last? And Eagle once again forces Isaac to play just before him. Yeah. 
Do you feel like that's an advantage? I think... I don't know. I, it doesn't really... It really just depends who executes, because, you know, it can feel like an advantage if Isaac throws a bad one and you throw it good, but at the same time, he throws it good, then I feel like the pressure can feel like it's on you, mm-hmm. so you really just got to play your game. There's definitely certain scenarios, though, where it can be very helpful. A hole, though, where you know you have to go for the birdie. Eagle kind of hangs oh, that one softly. Wide. Good ground play, though. Yeah, fortunate that, skip. Uh, not expecting that tactic to skip out of the clovers like that. It looked like he barely threw it on that one. Yeah, and that's the first putt Eagles had to make in this playoff. This is playoff hole number five. Yeah, you can see the sh- shadows getting long on the ground. Lighting's starting to change. We're hitting that golden hour, and these fans are looking for a champion to be crowned as we head into our sixth hole of this playoff. Once again, McMahon will lead us off on 18. As the players switch off T order every hole during the playoffs, it's our new system. <laughs> it's still just going so large. <laughs> so wide out towards that barn, and this one looks nice and in the middle. Yeah. Softer skip. Right. Right at that mark. He's been chipping those 315 foot forehands in. Isaac, this one's holding a little longer than the rest. Does it have the height? Oh, it man. It does not appear to have gotten back into the shortcut. Huge mistake there. And that, that is playing as hazard, so he doesn't have to take it all the way back. He can certainly get up and down. Tricky run up here. Some frustration for our world champion. As he knows this is likely going to spell the end the way Eagle's been throwing this approach. He's yeah. putting it inside the bullseye, it seems like, almost every time. Can't can't really imagine him missing. Let's see how the nerves are for McMahon. Proven champion. Nice and high. Yeah, drops it inside circle one. All right, for the win. And your crush boy for the Disc Mania Open Champion. Came all the way up to Canada to put on a show for these fans. Champion Isaac Robinson. These fans got their money's worth plus some. What a weekend of golf, Connor. I mean, he wire to wire pretty much. Yeah, Eagle looked like a strong choice all weekend. His ability to break some of these holes <laughs> over the top and <laughs> rightfully lays in the grass exhausted after yeah. a long day of disc golf. Extra hours worth of play or so. I feel like that's that's the longest playoff. I feel like since that 2014 playoff at Worlds with Ricky and Paul. But if guys, if there is a longer one, go ahead and let me know in the comments. And yeah, thank you so much for for joining us here for this memorable battle here in Canada. Taking a look at our top ten, Gavin Babcock. It's his first podium, I believe, at a Disc Golf Pro Tour event. Jake Wolf, top five. Connor O'Reilly, congrats on your top 10 finish. It's been awesome being on the mic with you all season here with Central Coast. Thanks for the opportunity, you guys. Covering all these silver events has been quite the pleasure. Yeah, that's a wrap on the Silver Series Tour this season. Connor, where can they find you over on Instagram and YouTube? Connor O'Reilly, 99648, and Connor O'Reilly on YouTube. Check me out. And I am Perks of Disc Golf on both. We love you guys so much for the support. And we'll see you next week at Maple Hill.